Now we're going to be testing some techniques for stopping sneezes from spreading their wares, their germs, their bacteria, and that's what this rig is set up to test. Jamie and I will wear white suits, like I'm wearing now, and stand here at the apex, and we will sneeze. And of course, our mouths will be filled with colored liquid like before. We're going to try and prevent the spread of that sneeze with three different methods. One, open hand. Hatsu! Two, into the elbow. Hatsu! And three, something no gentleman should be without, a handkerchief. Hatsu! We're going to be looking at our suits and on the floor to see which one works the best. Sneezing into the open hand. I'm predicting this is going to be kind of a horror show. A swig and a sniff later. <coughs> oh, there's another one coming. For each style, <coughs> they're going to unleash a sample of three sneezes. <coughs> It's horrible, doesn't it? I look like a vampire. Ah! Adam's face is a picture, but it's the canvas that tells the real story. I see spots up to eight feet away, dude. Yeah, it did spread quite a lot, but there's a lot of markings here. So I'd say single hand, not so good. Yeah, not so good. Even with his hand directly in front of the oncoming sneeze, Adam can't begin to contain the explosion. Now, I'm pretty clear that sneezing into your hand is meant as a courtesy to those around you to keep from spreading your germs onto them. And as far as I can see, it's quite effective at doing exactly the opposite. I noticed there's almost no red dye on me at all and crap loads all around me. If I was on a subway, I'm typhoid Mary. With the hand getting the thumbs down, can the elbow do any better? To find out, it's over to Jamie, and he'll be sneezing in green. Now, we wait for the sneeze to take effect on Jamie's Hoosier nose. Three sneezes later, and the results are very impressive. Yeah, I see only two droplets and one on your shoe, and let's look at your elbow here. That's totally localized to you, man. And you know what? It's all on my arm and not on my hand, so I'm not as likely to spread it around. Yeah, it's doubly effective. Hands down, the elbow is a highly effective technique, with virtually the entire sneeze contained on each of Jamie's sneezes. But can the humble hanky do better still? Well, it's back to Adam, and for this final test, He's sneezing in blue. How do we do? I see a tiny, 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 tiny dot of blue there. At first, it seems like the hanky may be victorious. Until... I see some on the hanky. And look, it's penetrated all the way to both sides. It's penetrated both sides, and perhaps most damningly, whoop, it's on my hands, ready to spread to the next person whose hand I shake. The sneeze seeped through the hanky, contaminating Adam's hand, making it a pretty poor technique. And it gets worse. Let me make one more thing clear about this hanky I'm holding here. Imagine, how'd you, how'd you, how'd you, you sneeze in it all day long, and you keep on putting it in your pocket, pulling it back out, giving people change from your pocket, handing them your pen, handing them your phone, talking on your phone, spreading germs. Yeah, it's not just a Rorschach test, it's a Petri dish. Although the droplets were contained, the hand exposure means the hanky has hit the skids. So, this flu season, which method are you going to use? The hand? The elbow? It's got to be the elbow. I totally agree. It's the elbow. So now you know. If someone nearby has a runny nose, can they spread their snot to you just by being close? To find out, the Mythbusters are throwing a party. Soon, I will have six guests, or as I like to call them, test subjects, having a party with me. 
under test conditions. These conditions are, three of my guests are gonna behave as germaphobes. Three of my guests have no idea what's happening. I will be spreading my nasal secretions far and wide while performing a series of normal party-like tasks. Cake, toasts, games, what have you. At the end of all of this, we're gonna flick out the lights, turn on the ultraviolet lights, and see how far I've been able to spread my secretions. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to get into makeup. So as not to reveal what's being tested to our guest guinea pigs, special effects artist Danny gives Adam a nose job. Oh, it's just a little bit restrictive, but not bad. Hell, a lot better than the Band-Aid. With Adam in the chair, Jamie prepares our three germaphobe guests. Welcome to the party. Thank you. So this is how this is gonna work. Adam has a cold, and your job is not to get that cold. You still have to stay here, you can't just leave, but you don't want to catch us cold. All right, sounds good. Gross. <laughs> Carrie, Grant, and Tori will try their germaphobe best not to pick up Adam's nasal secretions. However, the control group, the remaining three guests, will have no idea Adam is even secreting. Hello, Pearl, nice to meet you. Adam just wiped his nose, and now he's shaking hands. That stuff's getting everywhere. While Jamie tracks the contamination, Adam's rig will drip at exactly the rate a human nose runs, 60 milliliters an hour. Oh, we're gonna have a fun little party here. Are you guys ready? <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm sorry, I've got a little, a little bit of a stuffy nose. Remember, the goal is to find out if Adam will pass on his pseudo-secretions to his guests through the normal activity of a party. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for participating in my uh, little science experiment a true sport. So we're getting some good contact here. We've got him handling the plates, the forks. Those are being passed over. <laughs> With any luck, each one of those has been marked. Although our trio of germaphobes keep an eye on exactly what Adam's touching, the unprepared guests have no idea what's being passed around. OK, it looks like as he's pouring, he's touching them on the shoulder. So each one of those is a mark. There ain't no party like a Mythbusters party. And although the good times and the dice roll, eventually the fun must come to an end. Thanks again. <laughs> Celebrating you. Thank you so much for coming. Really. But of course, our test subjects are still in the dark, and the moment has come for the big snotty reveal. What was going on was that I had a mechanical runny nose, I had a little tube running down the side of my nose, dripping a fluorescing fluid. The goal was to see how far my nasal secretions might travel if I had a cold, and who might get those on them. To give you an idea about how much it spread on me alone, normally my skin would not fluoresce under black light. Are you ready? <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah. Adam may look like a radioactive clown, but has he spread his radioactive red snot? <laughs> First off, the unknowing guest guinea pigs. Leah, let's see those hands. Hold them up into the light. Oh, yeah. They all bear the telltale signs of contamination. But what about our germaphobe trio? Despite their best efforts, Grant and Tori couldn't escape the neon. Grant, let's see those I hands. I couldn't avoid shaking your hand. Tori? Oh, Tori. You got it. Did we, got it on did we sneak here? off somewhere? Tori has even ended up with snot on his face. Carrie, however, is a different story. I have to confess, I'm actually a germaphobe, so this was not too hard for me. And I am not surprised I did this well. Nice. Wow. Incredible. So how many of us got colds? I'd say five out of the six of you have been legitimately exposed with only a 30-minute dinner party <laughs> and one typhoid mirror. So even though I knew Adam had a fake cold, I was still kind of grossed out by the idea. So I kind of employed all of my usual techniques not to get sick. I didn't touch anything or anywhere that he touched. Uh, when he handed me something, I wiped it off with my napkin. Right at the very end of dinner, as we were saying our goodbyes, Adam stuck out his hand and I had to shake it. And you know what? If someone sticks out their hand, you can't avoid shaking it. And that is where he got me. With five out of six guests infected at a dinner table that's more neon than not, 
Where does this leave the myth? Look around me. Look at how far and wide my secretions have spread to everywhere on this table. Next time you think you've got an innocuous runny nose, <laughs> think again. Think again, indeed.